Hi, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss further two applications of integrals and now look at cardiac output and basically derive it using integrals and find a formula for that and also go in definition of that in uh, more detail in a bit. Basically, uh, let's just be first go over the uh, human cardiovascular system and this figure below shows that and again this is the heart with the veins and arteries connected to it. Uh, basically blood returns from the body through the veins so that's uh, these are uh, so let's say you had your body your arms legs etc and every part of your body then what happens is blood which has um, oxygen depleted uh, blood goes into the right atrium and again the right is on the left side of this drawing because if you were to look at the mirror this is let's say uh, Let's say you're looking at the mirror, that's a person, and then the heart, again, the left side is going to be here because you're looking at the mirror, that's the left, and, the, and then the right side is over on here. So it's, everything is flipped when you're looking at the mirror. So that's why this is the left one, that's the right atrium. An atrium is just an opening, etc. So, it's, uh, so the right atrium of the heart is over here and then it's pumped to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries for oxygenation so so the veins so here's another part body here it goes to this is another vein it goes to the atrium from this atrium it goes to this uh, yeah these right here these are the uh, pulmonary veins etc and it goes to the lungs and then from the lungs, blood then flows back into the left atrium through the pulmonary veins and, and then out to the rest of the body through the aorta. So the aorta, that is, that is, where is that? That's over here. Yeah, and this could be seen as a central artery that basically ships over all of the oxygenated blood to the body. So you have the lungs here. And then it goes through, as I said here, pulmonary veins. It goes from arteries to the veins over here. Actually, I'll draw that one separately here. So this one, there's there's uh, pulmonary veins and there's pulmonary veins uh, here as well. So it goes to here. And then from here, it goes into the red. It goes into the, let's draw this in dashed lines into this left atrium and then from this it goes yeah it goes to the aorta and then from this aorta there goes to the veins back to the body right here and then again you have the same loop going in like that and you could also draw it from over here where it could also go through this aorta and let's just draw the dash line behind this going across here going through that as well and you have pulmonary veins here as well so you have more than just one vein this also goes uh, this is from the right atrium goes to the body and then again body think of it body goes to the artery veins and then the same loop goes again goes to here to the body and it goes back and forth so when it goes from the aorta that's uh, blood with oxygen and it goes and then it goes back to the lungs through the right atrium to get oxygen and it goes out, that sort of goes to your body. Anyways, uh, the cardiac output is of the heart is basically the volume of blood pumped by the heart per unit time in seconds or whatever time you're looking at. That is basically, it's just the rate of flow into the uh, aorta. And that's basically from the left atrium going into here, the aorta, this is the last place of the heart before it gets shipped to the body. So it's pretty much saying how much blood goes through this aorta and that or into the aorta and that is our uh, cardiac output. And now the method uh, that's usually used to measure the cardiac output is called the dye dilution method and it's used to measure the cardiac output. Basically dye is injected into the right atrium, so beginning point over here and then from this right atrium goes to the lungs, get oxygen and then it goes the left atrium and then goes to the aorta. So again, dyes injecting the right atrium flows through the heart into the aorta. 
and a probe is inserted into the aorta and measures the concentration of the dye, leaving the heart at equally spaced times over a time interval zero to T until the dye has cleared. And uh, basically, yeah, for yeah, for our, our purpose, let's call C of uh, the function of time be the concentration of the dye at time t, and concentration is basically has units of when in our case, it's the amount of dye. We'll look at mass over volume, so that's our concentration C of t. And we know that the mass of the dye because we inject a certain amount of it inside. And again, like always with integrals, we can if we divide this uh, this section uh, from zero to t, this interval into subintervals of equal length, delta t, then the amount of dye that flows past the measuring point in the aorta uh, during the subinterval from let's say t equals t i minus one to t equals t i. This is approximately yeah. This is amount of dye. We'll call this a. Let's call this capital A. So A equals amount of dye, that's just going to be the concentration and then multiplied by the volume because again concentration is a mass per volume and then when you multiply it by the volume of blood we get the uh, mass of the dye which is the amount of the dye. Now what we'll do is assume yeah, assume that the time intervals we're looking at delta t is very small so that we can just roughly approximate, again this is an approximation, is small so assume that the concentration of the blood at uh, ti is roughly equal to, well, the concentration at ti minus 1 or the time interval just before this next reading. So if we approximate that so then we can basically find the volume of blood shipped over and this volume of blood is going to be roughly equal to the flow rate which is again volume per time times it by the interval delta t where where this one will call this f and it has units of well volume over time then when we multiply by time we just get volume so putting this all together, we get A, the amount of dye, is equal to, or roughly equal to, I'll call it like that, C of Ti. Well, actually, I'll call this Ai. Let's go back to there. And the reason is it's because we're going from the subinterval Ti minus 1 to Ti. So this is just a sub amount from that one interval. So this is going to be the concentration multiplied by the volume. So again, so the concentration multiplied by volume and then volume is going to be the flow rate which is F times delta T. So concentration, I'll do that, I'll just do this actually, times it by and then we have the volume which is flow rate times delta T. Yeah, and again where F is the rate of flow and again this is what we are trying to determine which is the cardiac output because it's basically the amount of blood flowing per unit time or any time that you're dealing with. Thus the total amount of dye again like always with integration it's going to be yeah, approximately when we sum it up so the total so that's a these are AI subsection of it it's going to be the summation of infinite or oh, the summation of i equals 1 up to n sub interval so more than just one AI there it's going to be C of Ti times by F times by uh, delta T and again, since this one, the only thing we're changing here is Ti, we're going to be, we could take the F out of there. Assume it's a constant flow rate of uh, blood being pumped. So this is I equals 1 up to N, and this is going to be C of Ti delta T. So now, yeah, so now we could basically let N approach infinity, and we can find the exact amount of dye. And again, this F right here, this is assumed constant. That's why we don't, we just took it out of the uh, summation. So we assume the constant flow rate or constant uh, volume pump per uh, time or heartbeat or whatever. So letting in, when we approach to infinity, we're going to have infinitely small, in theory, um, sub time, or basically uh, sub intervals of time. 
and then we can get a is equal to f times the integral from zero to t, because again, that's a Raymond sum, c of t, and again, when this is infinitely small, ti coincides with ti minus one and ti, like always when I went over my integration uh, derivation videos, this just becomes infinitely small, we'll just call it t, and then the delta t just becomes d of t, which is, uh, signals infinitely small uh, delta t. And now what we're trying to find is the cardiac output, which is again, the flow rate of blood pumped by the, uh, by the heart, and it's given by, we'll just rearrange this, so f is equal to the amount, and then just divide this out, the amount of dye we add, which we know, then divided by over here, which is c of t dt or the integral of the concentration uh, over the time interval we're dealing with it. So this is our cardiac output formula. Yeah, so that's the formula as an integral, and again, where the amount of dye is A is known, because that's what we're putting into, and the integral can be approximated from the concentration readings from the probe that you put into the aorta. Anyways, that is all for today. Uh, we learned this pretty interesting video on how the cardiac uh, the cardiovascular system and the heart works and how also about this di dilution method which is pretty interesting how to find how much blood is being pumped through the blood uh, through the heart anyways all for today if you learn like always you can download these exact notes in the link below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution